All right, so I just wanted to quickly share with you guys uh, six simple tips for better custom themes, just kind of some things that I thought up over the past little while that kind of have helped me out over the years. So I've just wanted to pass them along. Obviously there's more than this, but you know, that may be for another video. Uh, the number one thing that I like in when I'm building out my themes is making sure that my functions.php is super clean. Um, it is not a dumping ground for random functions, filters, or actions. It is simply, in my opinion, a place that should only contain, require, and include statements. And kind of what that looks like, this is something I pulled from a project that I recently did. Um, it's just a bunch of require statements, like pretty much all of these, actually all of these in this case, just go to an includes fol folder slash file.php. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to kind of do it this way. It keeps your functions.php clean. It kind of put th puts things into logical places. And it's not something you're gonna have to like, you know, scroll through until you find the section where, oh, I'm, you know, doing my admin menus in this part portion of the functions.php. Just separate it all out. You can get a little bit fancy with the folder structure too, but I would just say this is a great place to start. Very simple change, and you will pat yourself on the back in the future when <laughs> you have to go hunting down certain functions again. Um, speaking of uh, kind of keeping things clean is giving yourself a proper folder structure. Now there's a million and one ways to uh, structure your folders when working with the WordPress theme, but I kind of came up with just a very simple little one that I kind of threw together to kind of illustrate this. But essentially you should kind of put things into logical folders in your JS, SCSS, and uh, PHP that represent a component. Um, so it looks a little bit something like this. Um, you have, uh, first of all, your uh, functions.php down here, and then you have a library folder where all those things would go. And you can easily just know like, hey, anything that's kind of more functional and on the PHP level will go into this uh, like library area and all that's included through functions.php. But then you also have a components folder where you kind of have component one, component two, all that good stuff. So your, your actual markup is in one place and your controllers can kind of, you know, give you that information um, and all that. So then on top of that, you have your SAS. So also that has a components folder where you kind of place your components. You have your mix-ins, some settings. I mean, you can get real deep into this uh, SAS setup, but I, for the sake of brevity, I didn't, I didn't actually go too deep into here. Um, and then on top of it, we also have the same thing for JavaScript just making sure that things are kind of just in these like logical little folders that are going to make it really easy. So if somebody comes up and, and, and is on, is onboarded onto your project, they can kind of look through the folders and kind of get an idea what's going on, even though if they don't understand the underlying code. And when I'm talking about other people, I also mean your future self when you brush off the dust of a project that's three years old. So just kind of a quick little tip there clean up those folders. Um, use composer and .env for those of you who know, I love bedrock and everything that it represents. But uh, on top of that, uh, if you're just not, if you're not doing that, you should still use composer and, and .env. Um, it keeps sensitive information out of version control because you're using a .env file instead of throwing things like your database password in the WP config, which will need to go to version control or something like that and get passed around and, and all sorts of things that you don't need to do. Um, all on top of that, if you have Composer and you're using .env, you now have access to everything that Composer gives you. You can have a million and one packages um, that you can just utilize on your project. It's as essential in my opinion as NPM is to uh, JavaScript projects as Composer is to PHP and we should be use, utilizing it a lot more. Um, you need the ability to run Composer on your server. That's kind of a downside. Um, not every single hosting company that uh, will let you run Composer on your project, but you know places like SiteGround do that. I mean, WP Engine and and Kinsta and all them, they absolutely let you do this kind of stuff. And I think more and more uh, hosting companies are catching on. So another quick tip is use Composer. And this is what uh, the ENV for Bedrock looks like. So you just put your database name and user and password inside of there. 
And you would just have this file living on your server wherever. Um, it depends on if you're on development or production or staging. And it's not tracked in Git. It's unique to the environment that it lives on. And you're not having to juggle like if statements or anything like that and see what server you're on. Um, build in some asset compiling for your theme. Um, asset compiling is fantastic. You don't have to sit there and manually like compile anything just with like a shell script or anything like that. I mean, you could, but why do that when we have wonderful things like, you know, Laravel mix? I think that's a super easy one that I haven't gone over in on this channel yet. I might do that, but it lets you compress images, minify SVGs, minify JS, minify CSS, all the things that um, will help your site run faster. Um, you can move all those assets into a dist folder so it's not tracked in version control and you're not having to worry about merge conflicts and things like that when you try and pull down a <laughs> distributed folder. Um, so all that kind of stuff it will help relieve a lot of headaches that you might encounter over the long haul. And it's a little bit of work up front, but it has massive gains down the road because you can add on to it and do all sorts of other things besides what I've listed here. Uh, speaking of version control, version control, it keeps all your changes reversible. Um, so you kind of have this backup of all of your, all of the changes that you've made over the years. It can make deploys very easy. If you just like push up a change to GitHub or something like that, have a server, read that, kick out, kick off a deploy. And then all of a sudden that PHP file that you just edited is now on the live server. It lets you work in a team much easier. And again, when I'm saying team, I also mean your year, your your future self down the road where it's like, oh, like, you know, hey, I didn't, I got a new laptop. I can just download everything from uh, GitHub and I'm right back where I started um, on the old laptop. And then it only keep tra track of the files that matter. I mean, keeping a WordPress project up to date and just managing moving the WP includes folder and WP content and WP admin, the uploads folder. Like there's no reason you need to manage all of that. All you need to do is keep track of the things that are actually different outside of a default WordPress install, which is the WP content folder. So it makes it so you can actually worry about the things that you actually need to worry about. And then keep backups and test them. Holy cow. I cannot stress that last part enough. Um, Keeping backups obviously super important. You're not you can't keep those really in in, in version control. You really shouldn't. But then also uh, keeping those backups and testing them is the real money here, because <laughs> you'll never know when you're going to actually need to restore a backup, and you don't want to find out in that moment that your backups don't restore properly. So that's a thing that you're going to want to test out right now. Make a backup of one of your projects immediately and then immediately restore it and make sure that uh, things go well or you know play with that scenario a little bit make a change to it so you know that they're they're actually working but you know what i mean so these are just quick six quick tips i'm trying to keep the video short not trying to ramble too much so i'm going to just end it right there thank you to all my patrons who have been supporting me thank you to all of you who have been watching don't forget to subscribe if you're new here i love you guys and i will see you in the next one